In this tutorial, I wanted to give you an interactive and applied example of using index buffers. We've just extended the code that we did last time, and we're going to keep the same vertex shader and fragment shader. All right, good. I should probably start off by showing you what it is that we're actually going to make. And so let me compile and run this. In this example, we have three triangles, and each triangle has its own set of three vertices. It's easy to tell this because each vertex of each triangle has its own independent color. All right, so let's go ahead and shut this down. And we'll take a look at the code. Now to begin with, in lines 5 through 12, you can see that I've leveraged the preprocessor. Now right now, I've commented out the definition of this using index buffer. So because I've done that, I'm going to define num vertices as being 9. If line 5 wasn't commented out, you could see that in line 8 we would define num vertices as being 6, and in line 9 we would define num indices as being 9. Now, dropping down just a bit, you can see in lines 15 through 20, we've kept all of the same variables, but we've added one additional one. In this case, we've added another variable called index buffer ID that's of type glue int. And again, just like last time, I've reduced this region of shader functions just so we can see more of the relevant code. On the inside of the render function, you can see that I've used the preprocessor again to determine how we're going to draw the triangles to the screen. In this case, because I've commented out the definition of using index buffer, we're going to use GL draw arrays like we did last time. Now, let's drop down here to main, and you can see that we've used the preprocessor again to determine how we're defining our vertex and color arrays. In this case, you can see that we've done that in lines 138 through 158. Now, a couple of things to notice about the vertices. Notice that we have nine positions here that we've defined, and therefore we have nine colors in the color array. And if we drop down just a little bit more in main, you can see that I've used the preprocessor one last time right here. However, because the definition of using index buffer is commented out, this section is going to be ignored. So let's go ahead and run it again. And here you can see that we haven't used index buffers at all. It's exactly the same coding technique that we had in the previous tutorials. So I'll go ahead and shut this down. Now let's scroll to the top of this code. And what I'll do now is to uncomment this definition. Now when I do that, you can see that line 11 has been grayed out and line 8 and 9 become active. So now the number of vertices has dropped from 9 to 6, and we have this new value of num indices being 9. Now if we scroll down to render, you can see that line 105 has been grayed out. This was our call to GL draw arrays. And now 103 is active. This is how we call GL draw elements, and this is how we render triangles using the index buffer. Next, let's scroll down to main. You can see here, because using index buffer has been defined, that we have two new ways that we're defining our vertex and color arrays. Notice now that each of these arrays has six sets of information as opposed to nine and that we've also declared this new index buffer down here called indices. Now just as a review, remember we're going to make a triangle out of points 0, 1, and 2, another triangle out of points 1, 3, and 4, and another triangle out of points 2, 4, and 5. And that's based on the vertex position information that we defined up here. All right, if we scroll just a bit further down, you can see that lines 181 through 185 are now active. And this is where we're creating the index buffer and loading it onto the GPU. Now, if we were to run it again, you can see that the output is similar, but the colors are different. Now, why is this? The reason is because we can only assign one color per vertex. And therefore, when you have multiple triangles that share the same vertex, they're going to be the same color where they touch. All right, let's go ahead and shut this down. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is up here in the render method. One option that we have is to tell OpenGL that we don't want it to fill the triangles with color. And when we do this, it's known as rendering in wireframe. Now, to be able to pull this off, you can see that we've commented out line 101. So I'll go ahead and uncomment that. And when we call GL polygon mode, we're telling OpenGL to change the default method of rendering. In this case, notice that we're passing as a second parameter this constant GL line. Now, if I were to run it at this point, you can see that instead of getting triangles that are filled in, we get an outline. And again, we call this rendering technique wireframe. All right, so that's it. Hopefully this helps to solidify your understanding of index buffers.